And you know, that's another thing I can tell you. If you don't believe any of the things I'm saying in this video, just watch the videos. You'll see what I mean. Welcome back, travel fans. It is the first time I'm sitting here in front of the red sofa in 2020. And today I'm gonna tell you all about our cruise on the Carnival Sunrise. It is January 19th, and in this year, I have already been on two cruises and visited Disney World. So, um, my year's probably going better than yours. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, I really can't complain, I guess, about this year so far. I don't know if, I, you know, I can say like 2020 has been the best year ever for me because basically all I've done is been on vacation. Before I left, the last Sunday sofa time that I posted was my expectations of what I thought our cruise with Carnival was going to be like. I talked about the passengers, the cabins, the food, and the entertainment. Like that was, those were the categories that I broke it down on, or broke it down to. And I talked a little bit about each of those things and what I thought it was going to be like, what I was expecting. And now that it's over, now that I'm back, I thought, okay, before any more time goes by, I wanna tell you guys what it was really like. And I'm not gonna like, go into like huge detail about everything because there's a lot of that coming up in the videos, but I just wanted to sit down and uh, yeah, fill you in now that it's over. And I went back and I watched that video again today and wrote down some uh, like keywords that I wanted to uh, reflect upon. So that's what I'm looking at here in my telephone. The first thing then is the passengers. The first thing I talked about in the other video, my expectations video, uh, were the passengers. And I was expecting a very lighthearted party crowd, uh, a lot of loudness and party energy. I was not expecting relaxing and quiet. And um, I thought that there would probably be a lot of like drunk people singing along with the music at the pool bar. So. Let's go through all those things. First of all, it was a lighthearted party crowd. However, I would not say that it was, that I experienced anything that was more like um, out of control or crazy or uncomfortable than I have on any other line. So that was, um, you know, an, an interesting thing for me. Like I said, I thought, uh, to be honest, I thought it was just gonna be like 24 seven drunk people all over the place. And it was not like that at all. That's not to say I did not experience drunk people being loud, but I have experienced that on, on every cruise I've been on, including the Disney dream. And you know, that's a whole other thing wait for those videos coming up. I was not expecting it to be relaxing and quiet. And yeah, it, it other than when I was hanging out in my, in my cabin, it was not necessarily quiet or relaxing. How should I put it? But it wasn't like majorly different than I've experienced on other cruise lines I've been on. The main pool deck was always loud. It was, there was always music there or some event happening. Um, you know, at the sail away party, I don't think I've ever seen so many people on the pool deck dancing and they actually had a twerking contest. So yeah, a twerking contest, but people were really getting into it. There was also a second pool at the back of the ship, uh, which I thought, or I assumed on the first day that that would be like the quiet pool or like the adults only pool, but that wasn't the case. It was just a second pool. They were also playing music there. Kids were also uh, welcome there. And that's one suggestion that I would make to Carnival if they wanted to sort of, you know, like maybe update or think about it is to make that pool at the back of the ship on the sunrise, uh, like the quiet pool or the adults only pool. Uh, I think the one reason that that wouldn't be possible is because that's where the pizza restaurant is. And you know, of course kids are gonna wanna go to the pizza restaurant. If you look at ships like the, the bigger NCL ships, like the Epic, the Getaway, the Breakaway, uh, etc., they have a pool at the back and that is the adults only pool during the day. And at night it's like the open air nightclub. Um, so the possibility is there but uh, yeah, but probably because of the pizza restaurant, 
not possible. So altogether, and like I'm saying, this was I've only bought, I've only done one carnival cruise. I've only been on one carnival ship. You know, I can't say that this is like what it's going to be like on every carnival cruise in the world. In the world. On every carnival ship that there is out there. Of course, there are so many factors that play into that. But on this cruise, uh, I didn't feel like there were more drunk, loud, let's say rude people than I have experienced on any other cruise ship I've been on. So uh, a positive thing. They seemed like normal, happy cruise passengers. Let's put it that way. Moving on to the cabin. One thing that I was, uh, I don't know, concerned about or one thing that I mentioned in the last Sunday sofa time that I was expecting to uh, be kind of weird is that the, the form of the balcony cabins on this ship, on this generation of carnival ship uh, is, I have to say, the other way around. On most ships that I've been on, when you have a balcony, it is a sliding glass door. So floor to ceiling, well, floor to ceiling windows. Did you see that? I just went floor to ceiling. Confusing. And then it has a sliding glass door. So you slide it open, go out. If you want to leave the door open, then you just leave it slid open. However, you're actually not supposed to do that because the whole inside of the ship has, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, AC or heat, you know, like it has a whole ventilation system. And when you open your balcony door, like that, it creates like a vacuum and it, it messes that all up. And um, it can like uh, make like a whistling in the hallway. So actually you're not supposed to do that, but we definitely have. Anyways, on Carnival or on this generation of ship, the balcony wall is a somewhat larger window that does not go to the floor and, uh, you know, like a traditional door with a handle that you open and close. So that was a little bit different to me and it was possible to leave the door open to get a little bit of fresh air in the, in the cabin. However, you know, it's a door that opens and closes like this. So the ship is moving or if there's, you know, wind or something, then it would uh, close again. It wasn't really a problem. It wasn't something that really bothered me, to tell you the truth. I guess maybe one thing to compare it to is in that sense, it felt more like being in a hotel room than a cruise ship cabin because, you know, in, in hotel rooms, usually you have like a window that also doesn't go to the floor. If you follow me on Facebook, uh, then you saw the pictures that I posted of our of the really tired looking furniture on the balcony and of the dirty like dirty floor we had on the balcony. A lot of people commented on that. And uh, in case you didn't know or didn't uh, get the update on the second day, it was totally cleaned. Um, well, the, the floor was cleaned, but it was still the same old tired furniture. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. I just sort of accepted it uh, to be like it was. But like I said, if this was like my one vacation, if this was like something I had saved up for, for a long time, I would have been really disappointed about the fact that that was what the balcony looked like on the first day and major minus points for that part of the experience. I have the, the luxury, let's say, to do uh, several cruises. Uh, so for me, it was just like, okay, well, on this cruise, I have a somewhat, you know, dirty balcony and on the next cruise it'll be better. But I know not everybody is like that and not everybody would be able to just like sort of you know, forget that. So I will constantly mention it because yeah, it shouldn't have been like that. The cabin did have a Morgan approved bathroom door. That means a door that like actually closes and is like sealed. Uh, and the bathroom was a, a normal size bathroom for a uh, balcony cabin. You know, to tell you the truth, when we first entered the cabin, my first impression was that it was a little bit smaller than than other balcony cabins on other ships I've been on. But now that I've gone back and watched the videos and, and after you know living in it for four days, I realized it's actually pretty normal and, and it didn't feel cramped being in there. The cabins on the Norwegian Epic felt way more cramped than that, the balcony cabins. Of course, inside cabins that we've been in, been in like on the NCL Jade and on the, um, on the Mariner of the Seas and or was it the Navigator? One of those ships was a long time ago. Those definitely felt more cramped than this cabin. 
And like I said, after being in it for four days, it actually felt pretty normal. The decorations seemed very new, very updated. There were some interesting colors, you know, like some orange in there, but it didn't feel, you know, like kind of cheap and gaudy, which I know a lot of people uh, have mentioned about the feeling of the decoration on a lot of carnival ships, at least in the past. And a lot of the ships that are not, haven't been renovated yet, feels sort of like, outdated or kind of cheap and gaudy and it didn't seem like that at all. So altogether I had really, other than having a dirty balcony on the first day, no problem with the cabin at all. Plenty of storage space, plenty of closet space, uh, suitcases fit under the bed, there was also a refrigerator, television worked fine, the walls were not too thin, the AC worked good, it was all good. Let's move on to the entertainment. I was expecting very run-of-the-mill, like, you know, best of the 80s review shows with maybe not the best looking costumes, with maybe not the most talented performers, with maybe not the most um, polished and professional looking uh, sets and lighting. And I was basically wrong about all of those things. We saw both of the big production shows in the main theater. And although I wouldn't say they are at the exact same level as the as the in-house production shows that we've seen from Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Lines, they were still very good. And I would have had, like if they were, if we were on a longer cruise, like if we had done a back-to-back -back and the same shows were being offered again, I would have had no problem to go back and watch both of them again. And I can't say that about every ship I've seen on every, or I can't say that about every show I've seen on every ship. And I definitely can't say that about any of the internally produced shows that I saw on MSC. One thing I really appreciated uh, about the, these uh, production shows that we saw on board is the seating in the main level of the theater is not permanent. They set up chairs down there and because of that versatility of the space, they uh, created a different atmosphere in the venue for both of the different shows and it felt like it didn't even or it didn't feel like just going to see two different shows it almost felt like going to two different theaters does that make sense and the way that they set up like the pre-show atmosphere for the i think it was called soul what was it called soul of motown or motown soul something with soul was really cool so if you are going on the sunrise and if they offer that sh show then go like a half an hour early because things happen before the show that are very entertaining. No spoilers. Now, the shows were review shows. They did not have a plot or or they didn't have, you know, like characters that you get to know that sing about their feelings and stuff like that. It was just pop music that you know already. The Soul Show was music from like Motown and stuff like that. The other show was kind of like, what are they called? Um, postmodern jukebox where they took pop music and and changed it into different styles which was really interesting to listen to and overall very entertaining like i said i was expecting to be disappointed by the shows i was expecting to not to maybe not sit until the end to go in you know watch the first few minutes and think okay this is fine Goodbye. Not like that at all. We watched both of the shows until the very end. And like I said, I would go back and watch them again. There was a show being offered by the cruise director that a lot of you recommended and we missed it. I'm so sorry, but I don't know how that happened. It was, uh, it was offered on some night where we were doing something else. I really don't know. So I'm sorry I didn't get to see that. But hey, that will give me something to look forward to the next time I cruise on the Carnival Sunrise. Okay, moving on to the thing that surprised me the absolute most, something that I was totally not expecting, the food. But before I do that, let me give you a little commercial break right here. Did you see one? Was it about a Carnival Cruise? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let me go to what I was thinking about the food, the, the keywords that I had written down here from the last video I made. I 
had never really heard spectacular reviews about the food on Carnival, um, but there were a lot of people writing to me about the Mexican restaurant, which is called Blue, Igon Blue Iguana, and the Guy's Burgers restaurant, which are both included in the price of the cruise, um, saying that I definitely had to eat there. Um, I was expecting a less than average quality and selection and presentation. Um, but because of what everybody had written to me, I was thinking there was going to be fantastic burgers and nachos. Um, I had said that I didn't think we were going to have time to go to any of the upcharge restaurants, and I definitely wanted to do some room service. So, you guys, I don't want any of you to think that, like, I'm saying this, what I'm about to say, to, like, be provocative or to, like, make drama or anything, but the more I think about it, I think that the food that I had on the Carnival Sunrise is my favorite food on any cruise I've ever been on. And it feels weird to say that because I was expecting something totally different and I know a lot of you were expecting that too. And you know, sometimes, you know, we all have friends who like, when a movie comes out that everybody loves, they're like, no, I thought it was stupid. And then like, if there's a movie that everybody hates, they're like, this is one of the best movies in the world. You don't know what you're talking about. And I don't want you guys to think that like, I'm purposefully saying the food was, was good just to like, you know, create tension. It was just seriously really good. It might have to do with just my taste in food. You guys know how much I love Mexican food. You know how much I love tacos and burritos and nachos and, you know, things with melted cheese on them like lasagna and baked ziti and stuff like that. So it might just be the fact that they had all those things on board and they were very well prepared. But the food was so good and it was, and you'll see this in the videos, and you know, that's another thing I can tell you. If you don't believe any of the things I'm saying in this video, just watch the videos. You'll see what I mean. After a few days on the Disney Dream, I was missing the food on the sunrise. That's how much I liked it. That's how good it was to me. And that is not saying that the food on the Dream wasn't good. It just had more about the, it was more about the selection and the style, I guess. You know, as a vegetarian, when I am on an NCL ship or a Royal Caribbean ship, when I go to dinner in the buffet, which we almost always do, usually what I'm having for dinner is some kind of Indian curry and a salad. And it always tastes really good and I like it. But there was so much variety, especially meat, free options on the Carnival Sunrise. And not all of these are available for lunch and dinner. Some of them are only, you know, at certain meals, but with the taco bar, with the sandwich bar, my gosh, the sandwich bar, great sandwiches, and then fries, and then all these different dips you can get. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if I had any curry dish on the ship. You know what, I'm sure I did, but that wasn't the main focus. There were so many other options other than just some kind of curry. They had these pre-made salads with, you know, like avocado and beets and it was so good. It was so nice. There was so much variety. It looked great and it tasted fantastic. And that was way different than I was expecting. And like I said, if you don't believe me, watch the videos. You'll see almost all the food we had. And if you do believe me, watch the videos too, because you'll see almost all the food we had. I mean, we even ate in the main dining room and were both impressed by not only the food, but the service and the style of service. It was, it was good. And if you've been around here for a while, you know what it takes for me to say that I had a good experience in the main dining room. In fact, one of the dishes that I had in the main dining room, almost exactly the same thing was offered in one of the main dining rooms on the Disney Dream, and it was better on the sunrise. So, just saying. The only thing that I can say was a little bit disappointing was room service, and that might have to do with, you know, my picky taste, uh, and, and if I had been on the ship longer, I would have tried room service again to sort of make sure of it, and we will definitely be going on another carnival ship. I will definitely be ordering room service on carnival sometime again. Um, and so maybe that will, you know, even it out, but stay tuned for that video so you can see exactly what I mean. The room service was not really optimal. What do you guys think of that? Is that what you were expecting me to say about this? One major thing that I was thinking about the whole experience and that I have heard from so many people is if, if you start with carnival, like if your first cruise is a carnival cruise, then you stay with carnival and you'll be happy. 
If you start with Royal or NCL, then usually people who are used to Royal and NCL don't enjoy Carnival, but I can say from this experience, and like I said, it's only one time. I've done tons of RC of Royal Caribbean. I've been done tons of NCL ships. I've only done one Carnival ship, and it might just be a coincidence that they that they got so many things right on this cruise. But I now take it from me, hand on my heart would have absolutely no problem cruising with the Carnival ship again. And in fact, I would have no problem to cruise with the Carnival Sunrise again. I can highly recommend it. And for the price, oh my gosh, that's something I didn't even think about. This cruise was so inexpensive. It did not even cost, and I think I'm getting this right, I think we paid $490. So that's like a little over $100 a night. And it was fantastic. For that price, it was fantastic. And there you go. And now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In the last Sunday Sofa Time, uh, like I said, I talked about my expectations of the cruise before we had embarked on it. And so these comments are about what I said in that video, a lot of the things we just discussed. Paw Prince 1986 writes, my only ever cruise was Carnival in 2018, but I loved it. And yes, those viewers are right. I hope you eat at Guy's Burgers. So good. Yeah, sorry to disappoint you, but I did not eat at Guy's Burgers. Two reasons. One of them is because they're open basically at the same time as the taco restaurant was, and then I always just wanted tacos. And the other one was, there was a lot of grease flying around there. And as a vegetarian, you just don't want to have your veggie burger put on the same grill where all that meaty grease is. So I just skipped it. Sorry. If you do eat in the dining room, they have this chocolate lava type dessert. Another must have. We did try that and it was very good and chocolatey, but well, you know what? No spoilers. Wait for the video. I'm actually craving another cruise. I understand those people who routinely go on cruises now. I totally get it. LOL. For me, having the money is a whole other thing, but I understand the urge completely now. Well, you know, for people with a small budget, Carnival is offers an amazing experience. And, you know, we were in a balcony cabin and it didn't even cost $500. And so an inside cabin is, I'm sure, much less than that. And for that price, you cannot beat the cruise experience that we were offered. Holly K Dad or Holly K Dad writes, it may be too late for you, but I would recommend you pay for the faster the fun package since you didn't get a suite. You'll get priority boarding and disembarkation along with a couple other perks. When you go on, you can go straight to your room, so it's way worth it. For a seven day cruise, I think it's around $80 total for that. Yeah, this is something that I had heard about. I didn't do a lot of research on it. Um, several of you suggested it. It is like an upgrade that you can do. It's called Faster to the Fun. And it offers, yeah, these perks like um, early, um, you can get on the ship a little bit earlier. They will make sure your cabin is ready early. Um, and there are other things that are offered. We did not do that on this. I wanted to try to see what the experience would be like just for like a normal person going on the cruise, but maybe on our next Carnival cruise. And like I said, there will be another one. Maybe we will try it just to see what it's like and if I think it's worth it. Final comment from Mike Brown. Mike writes, I've been on Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Princess, Holland America, and Carnival. I just did a similar Carnival ship in October and I feel you'll be probably a little disappointed with the food in the main dining room and buffet. Wrong. Just not on the level as the others. Yeah, like I said, disagree. Wrong. Their burger joint and Mexican spot are good, but you can't do every meal there. I know, unfortunately, <laughs> because I definitely would have. Also, the shows were not good. Yeah, sorry, disagree. The other entertainment, like the comedy shows, were fine. Yeah, we had two comedians on board, and one of them we thought was funny, and the other one was not really our taste. Everything else on the ship was fine. Still had a good time. We did a four-day as well. You know, that just goes to show you that it's all about expectations and it's all about like, or, or, and personal taste makes a big difference in how you perceive and enjoy something like a cruise. You know, the fact that I thought the shows were pretty good doesn't mean that I'm saying that Mike Brown is wrong. It's totally a matter of opinion. You know what I mean? All right, guys, I have so many things to show you and tell you about these cruises and then when that's all done there's a whole 
you know, Disney vacation coming up as well, including the unbelievable Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Land and the new attractions that are offered there. Thanks as always for hanging out. It is gonna be a fantastic year for us here on the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, and I mean you and me, and I'm really looking forward to everything that's gonna happen. See you next week.